Welcome to uh, 2023 NAB. My name is Steve Walter. I'm the uh, Global Marketing Lead for Verizon Business Group Sports, Media, Entertainment, and Technology Practice. I'm really pleased to be joined on stage with my uh, friend and industry colleague, John McVeigh from HP, who is, I, 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 I don't think I'm giving hyperbole when I say that he is really the, the world's foremost expert on uh, uh, editing solutions for uh, virtualized production. And we're here to talk about uh, uh, 5G Edge Editor today. John, you want to start us off just by, uh, and we'll start with like batting practice. I'm going to I'm going to lob a couple of uh, easy ones in for you. What is 5G Edge Editor? Appreciate that, Steve. So 5G Edge Editor basically is a remote uh, editing environment, a solutions architecture that we developed with. Um, uh, uh, Verizon and with AWS uh, Wavelength in partnership that enables you to uh, deploy remote desktops and then the back end infrastructure for rendering for daily uh, edits and to be able to run some programs such as uh, Unreal Engine and uh, to be able to access that remotely from any location. Uh, that our technology is called HP Anywhere. You may know us as Teradici. So uh, in many cases, people have been using us for a number of years. Uh, that enables the uh, end user to access from any device their remote desktop that is running in 5G editor that has their editing applications that is then connected to the backend infrastructure, similar to what you would have in a traditional data center, in this case, built into a cloud architecture with Verizon 5G Mac. Thanks, John. So what, give us an idea of what kind of problems this solution solves for. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, problem it, it solves is just the transitions we've all gone through over the past number of years where uh, cloud adoption, cloud directions have been an interest for a number of years. Uh, a little global event occurred for all of us that uh, accelerated the need to uh, be remote. Uh, I kind of describe challenges that we've started to enter into range from that immediate need to be remote to working from home to starting to look at how do I do hybrid work and now I start to enter what I describe as a stage of hybrid life where all of us are realizing there are business advantages to working remote, no longer just business requirements, if you will, to work in remote. So part of the approach is what do we enable for uh, uh, enabling teams to work together when they may not only be still at home or in different locations, but in different parts of the country and bring those teams together on the same project to uh, work in uh, new production environments that are now very much mixed, where I've got a studio that may now be fully back and operational, but part of my talent is now in other states. They've moved during uh, the COVID time period. They're just people I'm finding that I want to recruit uh, that are located in those areas. I want to bring teams together in New York and Los Angeles, for example, to work on the same production and have centralized data, centralized security, but enable remote talent to be able to uh, access in and do the uh, um, same editing on the same dailies on the same production levels. So those are the, the kind of the business aspects that we're starting to uh, see become standardized where for a while it was triage, as, as I describe it. Yeah, you sort of touched on it already in that answer, but I'd like you to elaborate on it a little bit more. But um, you know, what are those primary drivers for, for companies in our space sort of embracing um, uh, you know, virtual or, or remote workflows? Yeah, so I think some of the, the business challenges and the business directions, you have obviously the financial, the moving to one, uh, wanting to move from traditional CapEx to OpEx type of business models. This has been a cloud driver for all of us for a number of years. When I talk to the studios, um, that still is a driver. We're looking at how do I better optimize my overall infrastructure and operating costs. It's always going to be a driver in everything that we do. Uh, talent recruitment, for this year and last year continues to be a major theme when I also talk to studios of all sizes, from VFX houses to the major production studios, broadcast studios, where the challenge in some cases is not necessarily in, do I have the resources, but do I have the talent for this project? 
And taking advantage of things like 5G Edge Editor mm -hmm. enables you to start thinking in terms of where is my talent, how quickly can I bring them online, versus traditional infrastructures of, do I have the machines available for them? Do I have the infrastructure available for them? So really changing some of those dynamics uh, to the point where I often think in terms of remote uh, broadcast, remote editing capabilities, remote artist uh, work, remote colorists as a, a fast track to finding the talent where they are versus the talent where I am. And, and be able to bring them online quickly without also the associated costs that we used to have traditionally of shipping very expensive equipment to uh, different locales, to different users. Now I have them download a software application into their device of choice. So tomorrow I can hire, or excuse me, tomorrow morning I can hire talent, tomorrow afternoon I can bring them online. So really trying to change the dynamics around time to market. I kind of joke with uh, some of the folks I work with that it's really starting to think of this in terms not of do I go cloud, but do I project green light as much as possible and, and really utilize my resources based on how can I bring in the talent to do this project that looks great versus be limited by, I, you know, I've only got so many desktop machines, I've only got so much uh, data center capacity. This is a solution that brings together three companies, HP, Verizon, uh, as well as AWS. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and the various piece parts of the solution itself? Absolutely. So I'll start with uh, Teradici, HP Anywhere, uh, our new name there. We start at the end user. Uh, we really design from the end user into the infrastructure. So think of us then as the connector to your editors, your uh, um, uh, artists, uh, your uh, um, sound editors, the colorists, that we really think in terms of how are we making sure we're enabling them on their device or devices of choice. So if they're doing some of their work on an iPad, and then they want to work on a Windows machine, and then they want to work on a Mac or MacBook, uh, they want to then jump over to an Android device that uh, our technology will follow them based on how they need or want to connect in at a given time. In our partnership with Verizon, now we extend from that end user, we've got to connect them to their infrastructure. So with Verizon 5G and 5G Mech, now we've connected them to an edge environment that is where their workstations actually reside. That begins the horsepower performance. So again, my, my traditional device that used to be a very high-end desktop, for example, example, can now be a fairly basic machine. Uh, and I'm using the horsepower of the uh, GPUs and CPUs that are sitting in Verizon 5G mech. So that gives me then the edge uh, remote desktops. Now we bring in our partnership with AWS Wavelength. I want to do rendering. I want to do large scale data um, compiling. I want to do dailies with my team on a regular basis. We now have them as our back end infrastructure partner. So from the very beginnings of uh, that production activity to uh, gathering the dailies, gathering the, the data, the editors on both coasts if necessary, being able to play with and work with the same materials and then get into the final rendering and get to final distribution. That's the end to end infrastructure that the, the three companies bring together. You touched on it a little bit earlier, but why, why are uh, latency and packet loss sort of enemies to creatives? Yeah, so traditionally we've all used VPN as one of our ways of connecting. VPN is very secure, that's the great news. VPN also does a lot of throttling, that's the bad news. So when you're working on remote technologies, doing uh, large scale data transfers, VPN is inherently producing some, some channels and roadblocks in some of that activity. I can have good performance at my machine, um, but I'm going to have other issues in that data transfers and some of those connectivity activities. As we get into re true remote desktops, remote connectivity, our, our methodology bypasses VPN. We create our own VPN, if you will. We are pixel-based versus packet-based versus transfer of data-based architectures. What that does is enables us to an, a, provide very high resolution, high performance uh, experience for the end user. I'm a sound editor and as well as a uh, audio, uh, or excuse me, visual editor. I'm using a, uh, Avid Media Composer as an example. I'm using Unreal Engine. I'm wanting to work on multiple uh, um, frames at a uh, given cycle. That um, our approach 
um, produces low latency, built to lossless, which means that even if we lose some pixels because of the frequency of our signal and the fact that we're not doing data transfers and packet transfers, the, the end user experience is going to stay consistent. Latency is always one of those things of how good or how bad is it uh, in milliseconds is the way we live our world in remote technology. We built in into our technology buffers and cycles so that if you're on a little bit of a choppy signal, that we'll main uh, make an adjustment so that the end user doesn't have to do anything. They're going to experience the steady signal they need to maintain 50 frames per second or greater. So the um, uh, objectives that we have in our um, architectural design. So uh, really it's moving away from uh, restrictions that used to create those bottlenecks and enable that at the desk experience. One of my greatest uh, pleasures, if you will, when I talk to editors, artists, is when they say, well, I've been working with your technology, and compared to my desktop, I don't see the difference. And it's like, exactly, that's the goal. So it does truly create a real-time environment that, that really mirrors or mimics or, or is, is identical to one that I would have if I were you know, on-prem. Exactly, so some of the things that we've introduced, <clears throat> excuse me, include, over-the-shoulder collaboration. Again, we're all now working remote in a lot of situations where we want to bring in teams from different locations. So uh, recently we introduced the ability for you to basically, as an editor, uh, as a colorist, uh, sound editor, to uh, host a session, have as many people as you want to invite in to be able to observe and, and be advisors and do the traditional, I'm in the studio, hey, gather around, you know, help me with a couple of these things uh, type of activities. We now have also introduced what I call shared pen, or the ability to share resource functions so that you can actually pass controls to another editor uh, and have them also work on the exact same application. So trying to create as strong and as, as real-time a collaboration experience that we would have had traditionally all of us in one studio where we now are in a virtual studio. You know, John, not long ago in the you know, very distant past, um, you know, studios were sort of loath to, uh, you know, allow their IP out into the ether yep. uh, for remote editing. What changed about that and, and what are the security protocols that are in place to make them comfortable with doing that now? Yeah, so uh, yeah, again, we get into the centralization of data. Uh, the dailies turn into the final product. That is the gold of the company, that uh, you know, the treasures of the kingdom are uh, essential. Things that we approach with remote uh, desktop technologies, uh, first and foremost, we don't move that data around. We are not a data transmitter. We're not moving those files around, which means we're not exposing any risk to any of that uh, uh, you know, precious data, precious uh, commodity that's being uh, produced by uh, um, the studios, by the FX houses, by the broadcasters. That uh, in addition, our approach, as I mentioned, ad addresses the security. So we still maintain just uh, uh, the exact same type of security protocols as if you had issued, as an IT perspective, a physical machine. The difference is now it is a remote desktop. You're actually controlling that entire physical desktop in your environment as an IT administrator. The individual is remotely accessing that environment. So it gives you the ability to maintain security and integrity of that desktop. There's no ability for even a highly infected personal machine that has our client loaded onto that for the infections to cross over because again, we're not transmitting any data. We're, uh, in a simple term, I sometimes describe it as we spoof the monitor in that we're providing the images based on image changes that occur that somebody sees on the monitor, no actual data transfers. When we get into rendering and into uh, the centralization, everything maintains that consistency that you're looking for from an IT perspective to make sure you've got the absolute master, you've got the uh, um, change controls in place, you've got user controls in place, you have the ability to instantly turn off user controls, so you're not waiting for a machine even to come back into the office when you've uh, turned off access for certain individuals. I just want to make sure you stress the point that it is um, a device agnostic, correct? So if I'm an Adobe shop or yeah. if I'm you know, using Unreal Engine, Absolutely. So uh, probably half of you are using Mac desktops or uh, other environments. You may have Linux uh, desktop operating systems that you're working on. You may have various endpoint devices that for those of us at uh, HP Teradici, we traditionally have multiple devices ourselves. I have my HP corporate laptop. 
Your IT operation probably gives you corporate laptops, corporate systems as well, but I have the ability on a personal level to go for my iPad, to go to an Android device, to go to a I, um, iOS, uh, a Mac OS device, to hop around systems based on what is convenient for me. Again, I talked about hybrid life versus hybrid work. What, what makes sense for me so I can hop around these various devices? From an IT administrator's perspective, again, the instant I log in, I don't even have to log off my iPad. The instant I log in on my Windows machine, that iPad um, session is immediately turned off. So there's no danger of dual systems open and running in those types of environments as well. So it addresses a lot of the security concerns, but also pure flexibility. As HP now, I'd love you to be able to uh, do all of your work on HP desktops, HP laptops. We've got some pretty good systems available for you. I have a lot of partners that are also at Apple, at Dell, at Lenovo, a lot of other companies as well that use our technology in partnership with Verizon, in partnership with um, AWS, that you consume yourself. So we make sure that you have that fluidity, that, that capability across the different devices. So what's the model? Is it a SaaS model? So it is a SaaS model uh, that uh, um, AWS, uh, as well as then Verizon for the uh, um, licensing models, uh, fairly simple. You may already have uh, AWS subscriptions, which means then this is nearly just firing it up within your subscription. HP Anywhere licensing, Teradici licensing is available in the uh, um, Verizon marketplace, available in the AWS marketplace, so multiple ways to uh, use it. If you already have our cloud licensing, you're already enabled. If you want to start experiencing this today and you've got a Verizon 5G phone in your pocket, you're already enabled. The testing that we did with Verizon and with AWS was very real world. We wanted to make sure we didn't require extra new equipment to get started and how you could take advantage of 5G editor. So if you have 5G on your phone and you're currently doing VPN connections at gigabytes per month, you start using this solution and this approach, you'll start consuming megabytes per month. So just in production costs or in consumption costs alone, those are areas that we help to immediately start to address uh, you know, the um, better performance and better cost efficiencies of this approach versus traditional VPN as an older business model. So we're coming to a close here, but uh, obviously I think you've piqued everyone's interest. I'm certainly interested. Um, where do I get my hands on it? So we are performing live here at the event. 5G Editor is up and running in the Verizon booth. We have a, a what I call a hockey puck. It's not the appropriate name for it, but a Verizon uh, hot point. So again, we're emulating a real world environment to show you the um, frame rate, latency performance. It's Unreal Engine. So you know, if you're an Unreal Engine expert and you want to kick the tires, come on over that you'll be able to play in a real world environment, see how it uh, performs for you. See, especially if you are an editor, if you are an artist, see how it, the, the um, delivery is what you would want to expect from your own uh, high performance workstation. Great. Thanks, John. Any final comments? No, I think it's been a great opportunity to meet with everybody. It's exciting to see NAB continue to grow and expand, to have all of you uh, to be able to attend uh, um, here in this session. Thank you very much. Happy to answer questions afterwards. Happy to meet you in the uh, Verizon booth as well later. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show.